My brother was asking me if I could uh, sort him out with some lights for over his gate, which is quite an awkward uh, location in his house. It's not easy to run wires to. And I dug out this old module that I built a while back, which is a battery-operated um, lighting controller. And I've connected some of these um, neat little, really genuinely waterproof, to the best of my knowledge, we'll find out when I put these out, little resin lights where the LEDs are all bonded in parallel across the, some thin copper wires. And I'll show you what happens with this. When the lights go out, when it gets dark, they light up. That's fundamentally it. And then in the morning, when the sunlight comes up again, they go out. And really that's all there is to it. So this unit here, I actually built it with a little Molex connector and these are well covered in grease just so that you know they hopefully don't corrode too much. Although having said that, I have used this myself in my garden for a couple of uh, years and it's been absolutely fine. It's not showing signs of corrosion with the, with the grease on it though, so that's uh, quite good. Now inside this, is a silica gel pack, just as a precaution. This is a, you find this in amongst your uh, packaging materials. Now these little silica gel packs, they, they're what's called a desiccant. They, the little pips of silica gel, and they absorb moisture from the air. And you can recharge these, you can pop these in the microwave and give them a wee blast in the microwave and it'll, it'll drive all the moisture out of them to recharge them. But um, in this case, you know, just ambient room humidity is fine, you know, um, it was just a precaution in case water got in here. The battery pack is a standard sort of three AA battery pack with alkaline cells. The rubber band is because I've lost the cover and I haven't really haven't a clue where I've put that. Um, and on the back is a little circuit board, and I was looking for the circuit, the schematic for this, sorry, the, the actual PCB file, I couldn't find it. But uh, it's so simple you don't need a PCB. You can literally just build it on the back of the battery pack and just blob it with hot melt glue, because you'll be using hot melt glue anyway to seal the wires. So it's got what's called an LDR, light dependent resistor. This is a little cadmium sulphide LDR, and I think I probably nicked it out of a wee night light or something like that. You've, you'll find loads of um, things in your house that have these already if you can't find, can't find them from your supplier or are too impatient to wait for them to be delivered by your supplier. And rather oddly, in this particular one, I used a 2N7000 transistor, which is a, a field effect transistor. Um, but you could use a standard um, silicon NPN type transistor. So um, the gist of it is that um, it's a, a fairly waterproof-ish. This one isn't great, but it's a little Tupperware container that's going to pass some light um, so it can actually detect the light level. And you want it to be at least slightly waterproof to try and uh, keep the electronics dry. Uh, this one has been pretty good actually. Uh, it's only ever got a slight moisture in it once when the wind uh, was quite stormy and it ended up on its side and w water wicked in uh, along the edge. But anyway, you can improvise with what you can find. So let's, uh, I'll draw you the circuit diagram. This is not rocket science, it's really very straightforward. I'll draw the two styles that I, I did, the 2N7000. So here we go. We've got the plus 4.5 volts, which is derived from Three times AA cells. I recommend uh, the AA size. You could use C or D if you want, but the AA cells are um, the easiest to get. So they're uh, alkaline cells or rechargeable if you wish. So there's uh, the negative and there's the plus 4.5 volts. The LEDs, uh, there's a resistor, 10 to 100 ohms, depending how bright you want the LEDs. And then that goes out to the LEDs itself. So that's the string of LEDs in parallel. You could repurpose uh, solar garden lights or use these little um, wire ones. I think these are quite good. Well, I'll see how they last in the weather and uh, let you know if uh, they have any adverse problems with them. So then this is where I really struggle with drawing MOSFET, uh, sorry, FET, uh, transistors. That's right, I think. Um, and there's a wee arrow pointing in there, and it goes down to there. That's that's about it. And then there's usually a little protection diode built in as well. This is all a moot point because you know it's all built in the one package, and all you need to know is it's got um, 
three terminals. It's got the gate, it's got the source, which goes down to the negative, and the drain. And it kind of acts like an NPN transistor, where the source is the emitter, drain is the collector, and the gate is the base. Except with these, uh, with FETs, they, um, they operate on the voltage in the gate, as, and they draw virtually no current um, in the uh, gate itself, whereas the uh, NPN transistor just amplifies the current in its base, the gate just detects a, a sort of rough voltage level, which is round about 2 volts for the 2N7000 FET. So next thing, we've got a... In this case, I used a 100K resistor, because I wanted the lights only to come on when it was really pitch black, and then an LDR, and the LDR is just really whatever you can find. And that's fundamentally it. You can play about with the value of this um, resistor that will determine when the lights come on at night. Because what actually happens is that during the day, the LDR, when an ambient daylight is lighting it, it tends to pull the gate down to the ground level, uh, down to the negative. And as it gets darker and its resistance increases, the voltage on the gate slowly rises via this resistor until it reaches the threshold at which these lights will turn on. I used 100 ohms because, I, you know, I live in a very dark area. We don't have much in the way of street lighting, and certainly my brother has no street lighting near him, so it's going to look amply bright. You'd be surprised how bright uh, these lights are. Even 100 LEDs will look bright. This is, uh, this is a string of 50, though. However, there is another version of this circuit. Um, I'll also I'll show the that's the way you'd actually be using that transistor the two N seven thousand because that's the drain source and the gate and that's seen from above. However, um, if you want to use an NPN transistor, it's pretty much the same circuit. It's the battery pack. It's that. 10 to 100 ohm resistor. Ten to 100 ohm. Um, going out to the LEDs. And this is a bit where you all feel absolutely at home again because it's just an ordinary NPN transistor. And that transistor could be, um, it could be a 2N3904, or it could be a BC547. However, they have a slightly different pinout. And once again, you'll have the resistor and the LDR. Not sure about the value of this, I'd say 10k to 100k. You may have to experiment. It depends if you have much ambient light in your neighbourhood, because if you do, um, it may never get dark enough to actually make these lights light up. So you may have to lower the value of that to actually make it more sensitive. And that's fundamentally the circuit. Now, oh, um, if you've got a... Two N three nine O four, which is a very popular transistor in America, I believe, and then in the UK we like our BC five four seven, and that's going to be. Um, I should write it in here: collector, emitter, base, collector, collector, base, base, emitter. And these transistors are all viewed from above, so they're pretty much as they, they uh, look in that application. So, if you wanted to uh, build it on the back of the battery box without a circuit board, say that's the battery box, 3 times AA cell battery box, You would um, start off, there's a positive that you'd bring the wire round onto. You'd have two resistors, you'd have the 10 to 100 ohm one, Oop. feeding the LEDs. 
and that would go out to the LEDs. You'd have another resistor bridged up with the LDR. Now, the LDR, you can you can tuck it underneath, um, you know, as long as it can, as, as long as it's pointing out the side, as long as it can see light coming in from any direction or from above, um, it should be fine. So that can go to negative, and again, the battery lead will come out and going to the negative connection. Positive, negative. Um, then you've got the transistor, which I think I'll draw it like this. If you're in the UK, you'll have to turn the, the transistor around the other way, as according to the other drawing, but that's a... Uh, so, there's the other lead going out to the LEDs, and it's uh, going in to that leg of the transistor. This leg is going on to the uh, light sensor, so that's 100k, approximately, 10k to 100k. LDR, and then that's just going straight down to the, the ground. So um, that's pretty much it. You can see that you could just blob hot melt glue on random locations on that and it would just stick it all down to the top of the battery pack. Find your Tupperware style container, um, pop it in, drill a hole in the side, bring your leads through, hot melt glue. I would recommend the connector but it's you know strictly optional. It means that you can change the LEDs or take this, unplug it and take this in to put new batteries in it if you wish or clean it out if it's got wash in it. And that's fundamentally it, how to, how to make a nice little rural set of lights that uh, the batteries will last for ages. Uh, keep in mind that because they're going out during the day, that will, when they wouldn't really be visible, that, you know, you could just leave the lights lit 24-7. And the battery would last a, a fair amount of time, but by turning it out during the day, you almost double the life of the battery. Um, at least double the life of the battery, I should think. Uh, particularly in summer months, but uh, in winter when you've got uh, short days, long long nights, uh, it won't be quite double, but it'll still be well worth um, well worth the circuitry.